Is Nicole Kessinger in witness protection after Chris Watts strangled to death his pregnant wife and two young daughters? These are the facts. She was intimately involved with Chris Watts from June 2018 to August 2018. During this time, Chris and Shanann Watts were still married and had not legally separated or even talked about getting a divorce. As this horrifying case captivated the nation, this relationship came to light and drastically changed the narrative of the situation. Was she a witness? Could she have been the true catalyst for these tragic events? Did she put these dark and sinister ideas into Chris's head and instigate it all? In this episode, we delve into the shadows, exploring the labyrinth of what-ifs regarding this familiar tragedy. What is witness protection? Together, we will speculate on what her life might be like if she is indeed living under a new identity. Can we debunk any of these swirling rumors about Nicole Kessinger? You're going to want to keep listening. Don't look away. What I am about to share with you will change everything you thought you knew about the disturbing events leading up to the murders and Nicole Kessinger's role in this dark reality where a once loving father murders not just one person, but his entire young family. To understand the possibilities surrounding the question of where Nicole Kessinger is now, we have to turn to the message boards, YouTube videos, and online gossip. These platforms are filled with theories and speculations, driven by people who want to know more about the case. Among the myriad ideas, one prominent notion stands out. Nicole Kessinger is in witness protection. If she's in witness protection, doesn't that mean she must have witnessed something? So, does that also mean that she was there, present, when this happened? The Witness Security Program, commonly known as WITSEC, was established in 1970 under the Organized Crime Control Act and is managed by the U.S. Marshals Service. The program was created to protect witnesses whose lives are in danger due to their testimony against major criminals, including members of organized crime, drug traffickers, and terrorists. The program was further strengthened by the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 1984. Since its inception, WITSEC has relocated over 19,000 witnesses and their families providing them with new identities and ensuring their safety. To qualify for witness protection, an individual must be at significant risk due to their cooperation with the government. This typically involves testifying in high-stakes criminal cases. The vetting process involves multiple agencies, including the sponsoring law enforcement agency, the U.S. Attorney, the U.S. Marshal Service, and the Department of Justice's Office of Enforcement Operations. All potential witnesses undergo intensive scrutiny before being admitted into the program. Once accepted, participants receive new identities with all necessary documentation, financial assistance for housing and basic living expenses, medical care and psychological support, job training, and employment assistance to help them become self-sufficient and they get 24 hours. Protection during high-threat situations such as court appearances. Life in witness protection involves significant sacrifices. Witnesses must sever ties with their past lives, which can be particularly traumatic for children. They often face challenges such as maintaining anonymity, adjusting to a new environment, and handling paperwork issues related to their new identities. Despite these challenges, the program boasts a 100% success rate in keeping participants safe when they follow program guidelines. Given the details of Nicole Kessinger's situation, the possibility of her being in witness protection is more speculation than fact. After the Chris Watts case became public, Kessinger received significant negative attention leading to threats and a need to disappear from public view. However, the criteria for entering witness protection typically require a more direct threat from criminal associates, which doesn't seem to be the case here. Therefore, 
while it's more plausible that she chose to change her identity and relocate privately due to the backlash. Based on these facts, it's unlikely that she's actually in Witsek. These rumors are likely spread by her disappearance from the public eye. Additionally, there is no evidence suggesting that Kessinger provided any information that would necessitate her entry into witness protection. Nicole Kessinger did provide a detailed timeline to law enforcement and nature of her relationship with Chris Watts in great detail, which helped investigators understand his actions and state of mind leading up to the murders. She observed and reported inconsistencies in Watts's story and his behavior. Kessinger handed over text messages and other communications between herself and Watts, revealing his state of mind and contradictions to his public statements. Her Google search history, showing queries about marrying a man who was leaving his wife, provided insights into their relationship and Watts's intentions. Finally, she proactively contacted authorities and provided detailed accounts of her interactions with Watts, which were essential in piecing together the timeline and motives leading to his conviction. The information she provided was crucial to the investigation, but it did not appear to meet the threshold for WITSEC, which is typically reserved for those facing direct threats from organized crime or similar entities. Hold on a minute. There is still another possibility. Colorado has its own witness protection program, and while it does protect people from various organized crime, it can occasionally offer protection to people who are being threatened in other ways, such as threats from the public. People were very emotional about this case, and the mistress is the first thing that comes to mind when people ask how did this happen and who else could have been involved. Given the significant negative attention and threats Nicole Kessinger received, she may have met these state requirements. The program includes relocation, new identities, financial assistance, and other measures to ensure the safety of witnesses and their families. This could explain her disappearance from the public eye. If she's living under these conditions, what is life like in witness protection? Living in witness protection is a challenging and often isolating experience. Witnesses are relocated to a new undisclosed location and given new identities, including names and documentation. They must constantly be vigilant to maintain these identities and avoid contact with anyone from their past, which can be stressful and lead to feelings of isolation. The program provides financial assistance for basic living expenses, housing and medical care, as well as psychological support to help cope with the emotional strain. While they receive job training and employment assistance, integrating into a new community without revealing their past is difficult. Although witness protection imposes significant restrictions and requires complete severance from their former lives, it is not a prison. Instead, it offers a chance for a new start under strict guidelines to ensure their safety. Despite the many challenges, the program has a high success rate in keeping participants safe when they follow the rules. Thanks for joining me today. There are a lot of questions that haven't been properly answered. Some questions trigger more questions. We don't know the truth of what happened that day. We only know the aftermath. There are so many inconsistencies throughout the entire thing that leave us all wondering what really happened. I have run out of time for today, but I want to leave you with another difficult to answer question that you may have been asking yourself already. Did Nicole watch these events happen in real time? Was she there? If so, why is she free? What took Chris into such a dark, dangerous place? Was Nicole the fuel, and was the last text from Shannon the spark that led to an explosion of uncontrollable rage and death? What could have been done to save all these lives that have been lost or disrupted by this tragedy? Was there evil residing within the walls of that six-bedroom family dream home? 
Or was it simply complex human emotions erupting from the soul of one disturbed individual? I have much more to say. Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I also offer channel memberships, and I have a bonus for my first 10 members. Stay tuned.